Welcome back to another video from Between CAD Classes. Today we're going to create a simple part in Autodesk Inventor and we're going to compare the usage of extrusions and a revolve. Here you can see the simple part and if you would like to try this exercise yourself you can find a link to the PDF in the description for this video. I'm going to begin by creating this with extrusions. So I can see basically I have three cylindrical shapes and I'll start by creating the largest extrusion. So it has a diameter of 180 and it is 25 millimeters thick. So here in Inventor, I'll start by sketching on the horizontal XZ plane here. Then I will simply create a circle, snap it to the origin point here and give it a diameter of 180. Then I'll go ahead and finish and extrude this shape up 25 millimeters. Next I'm going to create the second extrusion. Taking a look at the detailed drawing we can see that it is a diameter of 48 and if we do a little bit of math here we can see that the height of the extrusion is 60 minus 41 which is going to be 19. So back in Inventor, I'll sketch on the top of the cylindrical extrusion. You can see that it projected the origin point there. So I can snap to that with the circle command and give this a diameter of 48. Finish and extrude the height of 19. Then for my final extrusion, if we take a look one last time at the drawing, it is a diameter of 68 and it has a thickness of 16. Back in Inventor then, I'll sketch on top of this small cylinder. Once again, the origin point is projected. So I can snap to that with the green dot. Give it a diameter of 68. Finish and extrude a height of 16. So that is how we can create this simple part using extrusions. Let's take a look how we can create the same part, but instead create it with a revolve. I'll start a new part here with the millimeter template. And I will sketch on the vertical plane, this time the XY plane. Now taking a look at the detail drawing, what we want to do is basically draw half the shape. So I'm going to draw the right half of the shape. I'm going to begin by drawing the vertical center line. So the total height of the part is 60 millimeters. And from there, I'm just going to arbitrarily draw the rest of the shapes and come back and add dimensions. So what I want is just this outlined shape, as you see here. Back in Inventor then, I'll start the line command and I'm going to start at the origin, snap to the center point, and I will draw up 60 millimeters. I'll go ahead and escape out of that. And what I want to do now is turn this into a center line. So I'll select the line. Then in my format panel, I will choose the center line option. So as you can see, that is now a center line. That is going to do two things for us. One, it will automatically select the center line when I go to revolve the part. And second, it will allow me to place diameter dimensions. As I said, for the rest of the shape, I'm just going to arbitrarily draw the outline shape in something along these lines here. I'll go ahead and snap to the height of the center line since I already specified that. Then I'll come back with some dimensions. So for my height, I already have the overall height of 60. Looking at the detail drawing, we can see that the bottom feature has a height of 25 and the top feature has a height of 16. I'll jump back here to Inventor and place a dimension of 25 here and a dimension of 16 here. I do not need this middle dimension. Adding it would over constrain it. Of course, if I wanted to, I could add it and accept it as a driven dimension so that I can see that value. The driven dimension means that I cannot edit this dimension to change the part, but I can edit the other three dimensions. Now I want to put in my diameter dimensions. Looking at the detail drawing, I have three diameters. 48 is the smallest for this middle piece, then 68 for the top piece, and then 180 for the bottom piece. So back in Inventor then, I'll choose my dimension tool and select the center line. Then I will select the line that I want to dimension to. So I'll start with the 48 here in the middle. As you can see, because I have the center line, it gives me a diameter dimension. 
that saved me from having to do the math on the fly so I'll go ahead and place that set it as 48 and I've got my 48 dimension the top feature was 68 millimeters so I'll add that diameter dimension as well and then finally I'll add in the bottom one which was 180 then I'll finish my sketch so you'll remember that I said one of the benefits of adding in the center line was that Inventor will automatically select it when I use the revolve command. I'll start the revolve command. You can see that it automatically picked that center line. Of course, I can make other adjustments. If I don't want it to go full 360, I can change the angle. But I like how it looks, so I'll go ahead and click OK. As you can see, two different ways to essentially create the same part. The advantage of the second way, the revolve, is that it gives me one sketch to edit. So if I want to make any changes, I can just expand the revolution, right click on the sketch, and edit sketch. Then I can make any adjustments in here. The advantage of the first method is it gives me multiple features. So that might make it easier to make modifications. If I wanted to adjust the extrusion height of the last feature, for example, I can just edit feature on that particular one. Also, if I decided I didn't want this top feature at all, it's a lot easier to get rid of it in the extrusion model because I can just right click and delete it. Whereas in the revolve, I would have to go and edit the sketch and remove all that geometry. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. Once again, if you want to try this part yourself, take a look at the video description and you will find a link to my website that has a PDF copy of the detailed drawing. As always, like and subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you for watching.